We've talked from, we've had local companies, we have Canadian carriers, we've had Middle Eastern. Now we're going to go to a more regional U.S. players and we're going to hear from U.S. Cellular. Uh, we have Mel Gassetta, he's the Senior Manager of Business Development over there at U.S. Cellular. Mel. Good luck. So uh, I, I get the coveted after lunch crowd, I think, right? <laughs> I don't know how I got that, but uh, I'll have to talk to you about that afterwards. Um, no, but uh, thank you for having us here today to tell, us, tell you guys a little bit about U.S. Cellular. Um, uh, as, as they've said, uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've been in, in, in this area, but I don't think too many people know too much about us, so this will be the first time actually we're presenting the company and uh, wanted to spend a few minutes uh, with you guys to tell you a little bit about us. Um, I've actually just been with U.S. Cellular for about 10 months now. I joined after 26 years with Motorola, the last 13 of them in Motorola Ventures. So uh, we are building a presence as well inside the company. So with that, I'll just jump right into it. So uh, a little bit about the company. Uh, we've been around for about 30 years. Uh, we are based in Chicago, uh, about $3.5 billion in revenue, and I think we've guided for for 2014, closer to 3.9 to 4. So um, we are the, the fifth largest carrier in the United States, but clearly we understand there's the big four and then that chasm. Uh, the company itself, 6,000 or so employees, and you'll see the, the footprint in, in the next slide. Um, something you might not know about the company. We are actually a publicly traded company, uh, but majority owned by TDS. Um, this is the, uh, the footprint of, of uh, the company, and as you can tell, um, we've got very large presence in the Midwest, uh, stretching from, um, from Wisconsin all the way down to uh, northern Texas. That's probably our biggest swath. Uh, we've got presence in New England, uh, the eastern seaboard, as well as the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we run about 4.7 million subscribers. Uh, the company itself has has uh, roughly 800 or so retail locations, and if you include agent uh, locations, that's actually closer to 1,500. Um, and when you take a look at our customer base today, 90% uh, uh, have LTE coverage, and about 50% of our, our base is actually on smartphones today. Um, and as, as I've said, uh, we, have, we have presence in 23 or so different uh, states. Um, and we do have everything from postpaid, prepaid, M to M offerings. Um, and so while we are a regional carrier, we do have a national footprint with our nationwide uh, network of uh, uh, partners. One thing to think about, because of our footprint, uh, you have to think a little bit about our uh, consumers. And the next slide will be a little bit about our, our, our uh, business customers as well. Um, you know, we are not a New York, Chicago, LA, uh, Miami, San Fran, right? We, we are Madison, uh, Milwaukee, down to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So it's a different type of uh, a customer base. So when you think about those types of customers, you know, they are community minded, uh, very down to earth, uh, very family oriented. So it shouldn't surprise you to, to, to see, you know, what a typical cons consumer looks like. Uh, family of four, uh, very middle income, uh, rural, uh, suburban home, as well as, uh, you know, they, they do uh, adopt the Android and iPhone devices, but it is, it is different. It's not your 20-something walking around LA or New York. Okay. Um, and as I mentioned, we actually do have a, a growing uh, business customer base. Um, and if you, if you take a look at the profile of, a, of, of that type of a customer, again, the, the first bullet point there, you know, they adopt new technology only after it's been proven in the market. Right. So these are not people who are going to jump on the newest and greatest thing. They're going to wait to see that it's proven. So they are not early adopters. Um, they're going to adopt product that's already been proven into the marketplace. What do they value? They value efficiency. They value savings. Right. So those are the kinds of things. That, again, it's, it's cliche, but it's very Midwest. Right. So they, they do value those types of things for their companies. Um, third bullet point, desire a low learning curve. Uh, you know, they're looking for low complexity solutions. Uh, they're not looking for things that will take forever to set up. And then, you know, the ROI and some of those solutions may or may not pan out. Um, and when you take a look at some of the verticals that we're, we're strongest in, uh, construction, uh, retail, wholesale, uh, manufacturing, and, and healthcare are probably some of the strongest verticals in, in our markets. 
a couple of ways uh, we, we look at you know, how we access innovation. Uh, we, we clearly have our product team. Uh, we have an innovation team as well. Uh, certainly, a carrier without a developer program, you know, it, it wouldn't be complete without that. Uh, we have internal um, innovation challenges where we actually do challenge our associates. And I'll tell you, there's, you know, some of the most interesting solutions do come from the field themselves. Um, and then certainly we leverage the startup uh, ecosystem, everything from the startup themselves to the investors to, uh, you know, the, the, the law firms, um, you know, everybody in between there where we can get um, info on certain companies. Um, as well as we've, we've now developed a uh, venture uh, investment practice. Uh, as you can imagine, I've only been with the company about 10 months and it's taken a couple of months to actually get that up and running, uh, but we are looking at opportunities and, and will continue to be doing so. How do we approach uh, strategic partnerships? Well, we are a Chicago-based company, um, but certainly we realize Chicago's got a lot of startups and there's a lot of things going forward on the innovation front, but we know that we've got to be in Silicon Valley, we've got to be in, in Tel Aviv, right? Those are the hotbeds, so we actually, you know, you'll find me out here quite often, uh, as my colleagues are in the back as well, they do make it out here uh, periodically. Uh, to, whether it's to conferences uh, like this or, or going to other uh, VC events uh, or, or other um, co-investor events, you know, some other strategic partners that we're working with, as well as we're, we're partnering with somebody to help us um, bring forth opportunities in Tel Aviv as well. Um, and when you think about how to work with us from a commercial perspective, um, product integration, uh, uh, merchandising and distribution are, are all fairly typical. Uh, on the strategic investing side, it's gotta be a very strong strategic fit. And I'll, 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 I'll uh, um, say it again, strong strategic fit, right? So, you know, the, the company's been around for 30 years. I, I will say it's, it's, you know, they are, uh, it is Midwest, so there's a bit of conservativeness to it. So we are looking for strong, uh, tight fits um, as we take it forward to our committee. Uh, typically our sweet spot's been series A, series B. Earlier stages are tougher for us just because of our, our scale and, and the time involved to do those seed deals. And typically our ownership has, has uh, been under 20% is, is kind of our target. It really doesn't differ even from my, uh, uh, my, my previous role uh, at Motorola Ventures. Some of the things that we, we look for, um, you know, this is, this is probably the most important slide, the, the call for innovation. Uh, I've broken it up between consumer and business, and then kind of that other bucket at the very bottom is, is kind of a wrapper around it and kind of supports both. Think of consumer as uh, a subscriber that's in home and or on the go. So M Health, you know, wh whether that's fitness and, and wellness uh, as, as first and foremost uh, is important. Education, uh, home security and, and automation as well. Um, and then entertainment, productivity and security. Security in this sense, meaning it's more along the lines of personal security, personal safety, uh, family safety, family security, right? Uh, on the business side, uh, think about um, EMM, right? Mobility management uh, and all the things that a, a, uh, a typical enterprise customer would be looking for. Fleet and asset management is very important. Uh, business and IT solutions. There was an interesting company here that we met earlier uh, Canvas, that was, you know, when you take a look at what they're doing, uh, it eases the uh, ingestion of, of data uh, into the back end. Th those are the kind of things that are very important to our customers. And then other um, advanced data analytics. So that's, uh, think of that as data analysis, uh, both for um, our consumption. So tell us a little bit about how our networks are working, you know, how the data is flowing through uh, uh, our, our carriers. Our, our subscribers' handsets, what are they using it for, that type of analysis, as well as the ability to take data about our um, subscribers and kind of aggregate it and, and monetize that as well. Financial services tie into that loyalty, very important. Uh, retail innovations, that's also, I'd say, dual pronged. So think about retail innovations along the lines of, you know, how can we uh, improve uh, the user experience and subscriber experience in the stores? as well as can we take some interesting technologies and help our SMB customers adopt that as well. And then um, lastly, local and regional, and think about that as being able to consume local and or regional content uh, and, or, and or marketing. And then uh, lastly, this is, this is the team. 
Uh, these are probably, the, the, as Derek said, that's what they were looking for the last two slides. So innovation and our contact point. You can reach out to me. Uh, I've got three other colleagues with Steve, Jeff, and Sue. Um, and uh, you know, I, it, it's been a great event so far. Uh, I've had something like 60 plus uh, meeting invites, which is, which is a little crazy. Uh, but I've gotten to probably about 20 or 25 or so, so I, I do get a chance to walk around the floor. And uh, if I miss you and you'd like to talk, please reach out and come by and talk. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. <laughs> Thank you. So let's uh, take the